Hello and welcome to our latest unboxing video. We are here today with kids books. We have a bunch of picture books and a bunch of like um, middle grade chapter books and I am going to guess there's probably a few graphic novels. So that is really exciting. I am Eliza and this is Amber. And you want to go first? Yeah. So the first one is, is a book in a series I recognize, Tristan Strong Destroys the World. I think this is the third book in the series that we have. Um, that sounds right. Supernatural. I think it's based on um, it's based on like a folk tale. And we've gotten good feedback about these from actual children. <laughs> That's actual true. children have read them and said, "Good, we like." So. <laughs> uh, another popular series. Brandon Mull's Dragon Watch Champion of the Titan Games. So that sounds exciting. Um, and this is a Fable Haven adventure. Uh, I survived the California wildfires 2018. That feels so like recent. This is the most recent um, of the I Survived yeah. series, I think, that we have. Uh, I'm trying to get my son to read that series. A lot of his friends like them, but he doesn't want to for some reason. I don't know. I, I've heard they're really good. Yeah. A Tale of Witchcraft by Chris Colfer, and this is a sequel to A Tale of Magic. And I don't know if you can see, but it's got this really cool, intricate cover. And this is yeah. like a fantasy. Nice. Ooh. Uh, the Trials of Apollo. Book five, The Tower of Nero by Rick Reardon. I think we have all the other ones also. Uh, Raleigh Jefferson's Awesome Friendly Adventure. So for a really long time, there was this Diary of a Wimpy Kid series, which was like mega popular. And he had this kind of slow friend named Raleigh Jefferson, who was always kind of annoying. And I don't know, I guess now Raleigh Jefferson gets his own series and presumably you get his perspective on things. That was a really good plug for the book. He's really a slow friend and <laughs> um, how to be a good creature, a memoir in 13 animals. I like the cover. It's so just for some context, this is by Cy Montgomery, who wrote The Soul of an Octopus, which was one of those just like super popular nonfiction books that everybody read and a lot of book clubs did it, including our library's book club. And so she's really good about writing about animals. And um, I think this is like a chance for the humans to learn from some of the animals. So it's supposed to be nonfiction. Mm. Um, Oh, there's so, pictures! There are some pictures, but there aren't a ton of pictures. There's way more text, so I'm not sure where this will go, but um, looks like yeah. good. I mean, it's definitely designed for kids. I almost wonder if some adults might be interested in reading it just because her adult book was so popular. Yeah. See the cat. And then the dog has a voice bubble and he's saying, wait a minute. And then it says three stories about a dog. So I'm intrigued. <laughs> uh, now it's, I think I just have picture books now. Um, J.P. Barker. Oh, Aaron, Aaron Barker, Mr. Pumpkin's Tea Party. So really like that cover. I do too. Oh, oh this looks cool. Okay. So even though it's Halloween-y, it still looks like a really interesting picture book. So. And kids aren't like adults. Adults are like once a Halloween ho holiday is over, it's like, bah, gone. But kids like are still excited about it after. Yeah. So. I have one more non-picture book and then I'll have all picture books. So this is Abby Wombach's Wolf Pack. And so she actually wrote a, a a memoir for adults and then this is like a kids version of it um which we don't always buy the kids versions of adult books but this one got really good reviews and um i think that it is good she's like an inspirational figure to kids so i think she's i'm gonna say a soccer player let's see if i'm right whoa an olympic gold medalist in soccer i didn't even know soccer was in the olympics wait so is it a fiction book or what is it it's an 
it's a memoir. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And she's a she's also an activist for equality and inclusion. So, for I think I think specifically for LGBTQIA. Uh, nothing in common. It's a picture book. It's an interesting title. Oh, just two neighbors assuming they have nothing in common. And of course, when you assume that, you generally find you have more in common than you thought. I like that. Yeah. I like that art. I have this one called Cookie Boo. And hey. another one that is Halloween. But again, I don't think the kids are going to care. And Oh my gosh, it looks so cute. It looks like the cookies are getting up to mischief. So I got I, I got that for my son from another library and he loved it. Aww. It was really fun. Space matters. It does, but what kind of space? So I think they actually mean like um this is actually like a book for kids of kind of about basic graphic design concepts, which I think is awesome. <laughs> like keeping space between foods, space between noodles. I mean, it's kind of cool, like from a sociological perspective, because we live in such a like visual society now. <laughs> yeah. Like, why not start teaching them these things in picture books? <laughs> Interesting, yeah. In the half room, half a window, half a door. Huh. What is, why is there a half room? What's going on? I don't know. So intriguing. That, who's, the, who's the illustrator? Is it someone that we recognize? Carson Ellis. Yeah, they did um, Do Is Talk. Did you? Oh, I didn't read that. I couldn't get, I couldn't get over it. I couldn't get past the title. No. <laughs> I mean, it was definitely like a really unique book, but I liked it. I found it intriguing. It was kind of fun to read because it was all just like, it was like words that didn't actually have any meaning, but like when you, the characters were talking to each other, it kind of felt like they had meaning, so. <laughs> a Polar Bear in the Snow by Mark Barnett. Uh, he's popular. a, we know him for sure. Yeah. yeah, he's super popular. And this is just, uh, it's an interesting kind of illustration, if you want to call it. The artwork is it's like collage-y. He's someone who understands that space matters. Look at all that space, see? <laughs> oh, whoa, oh my goodness. Wow, Cy Montgomery is just on a tear. So this is a, <laughs> a picture book version. I'm so confused, <laughs> so confused. The same, it has the same title With the as this one. the same concept, but this one is a picture book. Huh. I feel like maybe this one is going to go over a little better with the... Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Wow. That's bold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those seem like good potential Christmas gifts for people who are getting Christmas gifts, like, like to give to a kid. I bet maybe that's why they're releasing them both now. Yeah. Um, this one feels like it could be a really good Christmas gift. Unicorns are the worst. And this cover, I don't know if you can tell, is like so glittery. It's so glittery. <laughs> it's, it's, I really like it. Um, oh, and he did the Jasper and Ollie books, which I vaguely remember. Um, oh, this looks yeah, so much I like the Jasper and Ollie books. I mean, this just looks like really fun. Aww. I love reading picture books. Okay, this is a little bit of like a darker look. This one is called Star Crossed, and you can see there's like a constellation girl and then like a physical girl. And the physical girl has like stars in her eyes. Um, and it looks like kind of a fable, but maybe like a original fable. <laughs> Very intriguing. Wow. Look, there's a boy coming out of the stars. That's weird. Hmm. Yeah. Looks like one of those ones you could read to like older kids too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Julian at the wedding. And I think this is the same. Oh yeah. So Julian is a mermaid was the first book that this author I really did. loved Julian is a mermaid. It just had such beautiful art and 
I just loved the, it's like him and his grandmother and his grandmother is just so supportive of him wanting to dress like a mermaid. And I just yeah. loved it. It was so beautiful. And it wasn't like heavy handed at all. It was just a really beautiful story. And this I think is along the same lines. Doesn't look like there are many words, if any words in it. Hmm. So. Pretty sure the first one did have words. Yeah. My bed, enchanting ways to fall asleep around the world. Oh my goodness, this is totally my kind of thing. I love like how people do things around the world. Um, oh look, this person lives on a houseboat. When I was a kid, I always wanted to live on a houseboat. Um, this person has like a curtain of mosquito netting over their bed. And, and I don't know if you can really tell in the camera, but these are actually not drawings. It looks like they made actual little doll houses and took photos of them. Cool. So it's really cool to look at. I know that that kind of concept is popular in like our kids' nonfiction, but I like the idea that they're doing a picture book so that yeah. younger kids can really like be engaged with it. Oh, look, this person lives in North Africa and they're sleeping on their rooftop because it's the coolest place. I totally just want to read this book. <laughs> um, My books are all falling on the floor. <laughs> all Because You Matter. I don't recognize... Oh, the, so this author did Like Vanessa and Freedom Soup, which sounds very familiar. Mm. Yeah, and I'm on the record for not being as into like concept books, just because over my years as a librarian, I found that they don't tend to circulate as well, but this one got really good reviews and it's a really important like message, you know, that for kids yeah. to know that they, they matter. So that's a really gorgeous picture. I know it looks like it has really good artwork. It's the illustrator yeah. is Brian Collier and he's won Caldecott honors for Rosa, Martin's Big Words, and some other books. Yeah and every kid needs that message. Yes. Okay, Lewis. And it looks like he's a bear in a box. I don't know, do you need to know anything else? Oh, look on the back, the boy is hugging him. I think this is just about his life as being a bear. Being a bear, <laughs> the life of it. A, a nice simple, a nice simple picture book. Yeah. Um, this one looks so funny. Gustavo the Shy Ghost. I thought this one looks so cute. This looks very like Day of the Dead. Yeah, it has like a Mexican look to it. Yeah, the author was born and raised in Mexico City and she lives in Mexico currently. Oh, I love this so much. I just really like it. Looks a little bit like, um, I don't know if you, if you remember Georgie the Friendly Do Ghost. Those were like picture books that like I read as a kid and I tried to read them to my kids, but they were just like too long. <laughs> um, they, they feel kind of outdated now, but maybe this could be like an updated multicultural version. <laughs> Another really great cover. Again, Space Matters. Um, the Suitcase. And I don't even know what animals these are, but I love how like colorful and expressive they are. Mm. And Fritz Naylor Bellisteros. Oh, a weary stranger arrives one day with only a suitcase. It's a story about hope and kindness. Hmm. Something we need. Uh, will you be my friend? The sequel to Guess How Much I Love You. And this is by Sam McBratney, which I don't recognize the name, but I recognize this from Guess How Much I Love You, which was super popular. Yeah. It's yeah. like one of those that you get like for nurseries. Oh, it's just so sweet. <laughs> it's like really nice for younger kids. I have three more picture books. What Will Build by Oliver Jeffers. He's always Oliver just pumping out new books. Yeah, and he's so great because he's just, he's a great illustrator and he's very funny. So <laughs> kids love his books. 
I don't know what's going on in this book, but I love this table with all of these random creatures on it. And just, just, just good, good stuff. <laughs> Evelyn Del Rey is moving away. Mm. Oh no, I'm heartbroken. What else is this person? Uh, Mango, Abuela, and me. Oh, we have Abuela and me, I'm pretty sure. I think we do. Yeah, I read that one to my kids and it made me cry. My kids always get really mad at me if I start crying while I'm reading picture books. So it's just friends moving away, best yeah. friends. Ooh, this is a new David Wisner, super popular, and this one's called Robo Baby, and he is like a good storyteller and an amazing artist. He's one of those books where you can always notice like all the details. Well, they're always wordless, right? Are they always wordless? Uh, this one has words, look. What? Fire. Yeah. What is going on? I don't know. He's, I I really love, he always has this thing where he does these like low perspectives like this and I really like it, so. Okay, this is my last picture book, Love is Powerful. So we definitely Ooh. got a good mix, I feel like, of like kind of messagey books yeah. and just kind of very lighthearted. Um, you can't have all messagey, you have to, you have to mix it up. Right, yeah, absolutely. I think there was a lot of good representation in the picture books that we got in this box, um, which is really important. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, the very last one. This is called Lights on Wand Wonder Rock. And this girl just has like the most like happy expression on her face you can possibly imagine. She looks thrilled to bits. Um, and it looks like there's a spaceship above her head. So. <laughs> Oh, it seems like she sees the spaceship, but nobody else sees it. <laughs> Her parents just don't see it. I mean, X-Files, anyone? X-Files for kids? Okay, that's everything, yeah? <laughs> okay, all done. See you guys later. Oh, I have an empty box. It was such a big box. Bye.